Hey guys, what's up? Charles Float here and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through the wild variety of updates that Google has been dropping on us and the absolute chaos that it has been causing and the reality of what has actually been impacted. Um, so stay with me. This video isn't going to be a super long video because there has been so many updates that it's a bit confusing on what's hit what and what is exactly uh, what exactly to do about it. Um, so stick with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let's jump into it. So let's just jump into things. There has been so many updates. It has been crazy. It's been absolutely chaotic. The SEO industry has been awash with information about people saying it's this or it's that. But I am here to correct the story and make sure that everybody is up to date with what I at least think it is. Um, and I'm normally right, so let's just jump into it. Um, it's hard to tell exactly what has affected what, to be honest, because it is over a so uh, it's over such short period that we're not used to seeing this many updates from Google rolling out this fast. Um, it's just simply not the case. There was the June core update on June the 2nd. Then you have the Google Mum update, which people have been talking about. It's an AI ML um, algorithm update. It has nothing to do with images or videos. It's purely a text algorithm update. Don't tell, uh, don't get it twisted. It's a advancement, but it's not super, super advanced. Then you got the July core update. Um, and then there's a phantom update, which we haven't yet named from on the July 23rd and 24th. And then finally, on July 27th, you have the Google July spam update. So there has been so many algorithm updates that uh, it's been insane. I also thought that I'd just mention that in Google Search Console, Google have actually made a massive update to uh, the results and why it ranks column. Um, basically, they're now giving you uh, the search terms that will it will appear for, such as this example here being best in shoes, um, as well as other terms that it will appear for. Um, reasons why it is, the, uh, the result that it will be in, which language it will be in, the country that it is most likely to be relevant towards. Um, whilst this isn't going to give you anything major that will uh, completely game change how you're going to approach SEO and how you're going to rank pages, um, it's pretty good for foreign SEOs that are trying to repurpose domains or, or change domains or um, foreign SEOs that are looking to try and make sure that they have pages that are ranking or even just SEOs that are using hreflang tags and things like that to make sure that it is uh, showing the correct URL in the correct country language etc um, and making sure that you know um, Google has got uh, relevant phrases and keywords to a page is always good additional data that we're not trying to have um, so make sure that you check that out and see what Google is telling you about your pages and see how they rank as well. So whilst there has been all of these algorithm updates and there has been all of these changes what is the actual reality what is looking what is the uh, things looking at like on the ground of SEO um, I actually did a tweet where I asked Due to the last several Google algorithm updates that have come out over this month, which is in reference to July, because this tweet was in July, um, who's actually gone up, who's gone down, and who's seen no change? The majority of people have seen no change. Um, and then more people than not, more SEOs than not have gone up, and uh, some have gone down. So I would say that this algorithm update isn't nearly as influential as it normally is due to the fact that normally we don't see this high of a percentage of people seeing no change at all. Um, and it does seem that over the last few months there hasn't been a huge amount of changes in the SERPs for both English language SERPs and foreign languages. It's not as if there has been uh, a massive, massive rework. It's the same old websites. It's the same old companies that have been ranking for the last 10 years. It's just a bit of a reshuffle of the order of priority in the top 10, if anything else. Um, it's basically just a bunch of minor updates that have been rolling out. It's just that it's much quicker than usual and we're not as uh, risk averse and we're not as adverse to dealing with this many updates coming out as we would normally be. So normally the data is a lot more easy because we can go and say, okay, this argument update occurred over these dates. Let's see what it changed. Unfortunately, due to the number of updates and how many updates there actually are, um, you can't see if this update affected that or this update affected that because it could be an overlap of multiple updates affecting multiple things. So re realistically, the only thing that you can do, and the only thing that you can take away from this, is that you need to be doing the same things that have worked, um, and the same things that have continued to work, and just analyzing for the things that don't work, and to try and make sure that the adaptations that you are making um, are as 
backed as uh, uh, backed up by data as possible and that you are taking your time make sure that you're not reacting because you've seen a massive drop on day one um, because by day seven day 30 you could be back to where you were um, on day zero so the entire point is just to make sure that you stay calm make sure that you um, are, are seeing that you are make sure, making sure that you are seeing that you have been affected to the uh, extent that it's actually going to affect you don't just immediately respond because Google is also actively looking for SEOs who have that immediate response to algorithm updates it's one of the easiest things that Google can do is just to drop a ton of algorithm updates and see which sites make the most drastic changes because those are the sites that are likely to have SEOs actually working on them and then let's mess with those websites um and for those saying that this is a quality update, uh, the biggest loser from my data over the last two months has been Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia has been absolutely smashed uh, recently. So it's been, uh, in my in my understanding, in my um, kind of take on it, it's not a quality algorithm update. This algorithm update isn't actually making an improvement on the results and on the improvement on the positions for keywords. Um, because of course, one of the biggest websites and one of the most trusted websites in the world has been hit over and over and over again over the last few months. So what has it actually affected? What have these updates actually caused um, to take a hit or what has been positive? So the first thing that I've noticed, which is actually a change to the algorithm updates from the start of the year, is that content has been a priority priority for the first few algorithm updates from like January to around May um, <clears throat> it was all link building based it was all backlink based it was all about authority all about no follow links all about that kind of stuff um, whereas this last couple of updates especially um, in June and July it has mostly been about content that might be due to the mum update dropping and it being so impactful across the board um, due to the way that it kind of handles content and how it how it differentiates different pieces um, but in general content site content uh, has been a massive priority and thin sites especially have been getting smashed uh, a lot more recently. AMP has been harming sites, which has been a pretty interesting thing considering AMP is Google's own creation. Um, but from what we've seen, publishers that don't use AMP, things like the Washington Post, have been going absolutely ballistic. They've been surging in the SERPs and they've been doing um, extremely well. It might be something to do with Google's settings that they'll likely change in the future because it's unlikely that Google want to hurt their own baby, right? Um, and then foreign aged and repurposed domains have all taken a hit. Um, this is something that's similar to the update from last December, the Christmas quarter update um, foreign Asian and repurposed domains took a hit then and it's something that is very similar to that update it seems that the same tweak that they did then seems to be having another effect ago now and weirdly enough uh, PBN links have been doing better so PBN links private blog network links have been doing significantly better I know a ton of people who have PBNs that have actually said that they have started getting traffic to them um, which is a bit bizarre considering a lot of people have been rebuilding domains and doing all this stuff but it seems to be that PBN links are doing a lot better than they were previously and that might be just something that had been baked into the algorithm update and something that you might want to keep an eye on and make sure that you are taking as much advantage of as possible. So one of the sites that has seen the most traffic loss out of any site, literally losing around half of its organic traffic over the last 12 months or so, uh, especially over the last six months especially, um, is or, or Urban Dictionary. Now, Urban Dictionary has had a massive demise in traffic and there's a couple reasons for it, but Though even though Urban Dictionary has seen um, a demise, there have been other sites such as Your Dictionary, Dictionary.com, Vocabulary.com, these websites that have been going up. So it's it's almost as if Urban Dictionary has been losing traffic because it is a parody and because the words that are on the site are probably not um, meant to be on that kind of a site because it's general competition is probably going to be real, real uh, dictionary websites like Wikipedia um, that have a lot different content to what Urban Dictionary has. So it's a really interesting case study to see why they've lost so much traffic. Um, I think it's a mixture between thin content, um, the intent between the content difference and what is actually on the page, um, considering it's going to be so different um, and then just the overall site itself not having very good you know internal linking structure etc etc uh, set up for SEO but it's lost a ton of traffic likely in the hundred million visitor kind of range um, realistically I mean it's just a really interesting case study that I thought I'd sh uh, throw out there at the end of an algorithm video and that is it. Thank you for watching. I've been Charles Float. You can follow me on Twitter at Charles underscore SEO. You can get access to all of my free and premium training on Gumroad at charlesfloat.gumroad.com. And if you have been hit with an algorithm update, it is really interesting work for me. So you can DM me on Twitter or on LinkedIn or, or wherever you want to contact me at my email as well. Um, and I will give you a discount on my consultancy services. Normally I charge $1,000 an hour, um, depending on how big the algorithm hit, how many hours you need, how big your site is. 
uh, I'll give you a flat rate discount on that. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that grey notification bell to make sure that you are updated when every, whenever I drop a video. I know it's pretty rare, but I hope you enjoyed this piece, and I hope you enjoy every other video that I drop. See you in the next one. I've been Charles Flo. Peace.